Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and we're talk about framing a message. Um, because I hear a lot of people just talk about like particular sort of positions and say, well that position would never work in politics and this position's so good. Um, that's oftentimes because of the internal dialogue you have yourself. Any position can be sold and any position can not be sold. It's all about how you portray the message and how you sell the message. It's all about uh, persuasive and selling communication. So basically, there's sort of two things you need to do when you want to sell something. You need to sort of highlight the problem, like why, what's the challenge, what's the thing that needs a solution, and what's the solution, okay, what's the benefit? If you just tell me, hey, here's a solution, but I don't know what the problem is, then I don't want it. Okay, if you just tell me there's a problem, but you don't give me a solution, then I'm like, why are you giving me anxiety? Um, so you need both. You need to highlight the challenge, the problem, aka agitate, and then two, you need to provide solutions. You need to provide hope. <clears throat> and that's sort of the difference. Like, you could take the most radical libertarian position and make it sound sensible and obvious with the right framing of the message, with, you know, making it sound like it's something that solves a problem, by making it something that sounds like it makes your life better, okay? But you can make the most sort of watered down, mild, small reform, um, you know, and make it sound like, you know, you, you want to break down the fabric of society. And I mean, you can see this when you see very, very mild policy changes argued about in mainstream politics. So for example, someone wanting to argue for a slight change in the retirement age to make it sound like you're throwing grandma off a cliff. Okay, again, very mild reform sound like you are drastically changing society in a radical way. Vice versa, you know, some people, depending on how they present the message, can make things sound, uh, you know, basically a radical change towards more individualized and privatized schooling sound very sensible in the sense of giving your kids more flexibility, more choice to find a solution that works for them. Okay, and, and essentially what you're getting at is a much more transformational change. You're not just saying, hey, you know, public school teachers need a little bit more accountability or, or unions don't need, uh, need a little bit less power. We're talking about a much more drastic change and giving parents more absolute control over their kids' education and giving kids a plethora more options in private markets. But depending on how you frame it, it can sound very sensible, very obvious, um, because, you know, kids are having a challenge. Kid, parents are having a harder time in finding, making sure their kids get the education they need to survive in a workforce that requires more specialization, more knowledge to get by. It's no longer, um, you know, the opportunities for those who don't have highly specialized educations are growing less and less and less. So you need new education options, you need more education options to make sure that your kids are prepared. And that's why we want to push more towards that sort of more diverse, more expansive market of education choices and education options that are controlled more by parents and children. And again, sounds a lot very sensible, sounds kind of obvious, sounds like you, you can kind of see the problem, the challenge in today's world versus the solution. Okay, but then if I say something like, you know, um, I just don't want your kids in public schools, that sounds crazy, okay? Um, so it's all about how you frame a message. Again, you want to make sure people understand what the problem is in the first place. You got to agitate and you got to make sure you understand a solution. So whether you're arguing for a small reform or a radical change, if you, if people don't understand what the problem is, they don't understand and see how the solution solves that problem and how that solution and what the practical steps to get to that solution are, it's going to be really hard to sell them on it. Um, so again, it's not oftentimes what the message is. There's people who, again, go look at the Republican and Democratic parties. They advocate for stuff that we very much disagree with, but they're able to sell it because they're using proper selling communication as far as the style, the style and the way they frame their persuasive arguments. Again, illustrating or at least framing a problem and then framing it a solution as their, their desired policy goal. So keep that in mind. My name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Hopefully this helps you advocate for liberty better and get libertarian ideas out there in more minds and more hearts, etc. Thank you very much. Have a great day.